bro. <laughs> Get your camera. Get the camera. <laughs> <laughs> he pushed your ass. <laughs> he got it. I ain't about to fight him. He got it. Yeah. I guess I didn't think about that. Oh, they ho! Oh! Hey. oh. Okay. Yeah. Now, Matt, Sarah, what happened with you and him? I mean, there's not really anything that happened with us. He's just trying to pop up, pipe up to the king. The thing is, I mean, he's a one-hit wonder. He's losing a 10-8 battle right now to diabetes, and he wants to come at the UFC welterweight king, Colby Cass Covington. It just makes no sense. He's just looking for headlines. You know, the guy's a joke. He's a little squirt. You know, like he's got a 50-50 record. What is he, 10-10 and 10 or something like that? Come on, bro. You couldn't hold my jock strap, man. Let's, let's be honest. Let's be real, man. You have a better shot to hit the power ball than talking about me anything to do with fighting. So, you know, the guy needs to worry about his fight with diabetes, man. He's looking but, a little fat. And, but he said if there was a street fight, if there was a street fight, he would be the one to leave and you'd be the one knocked out. Oh, Wow. That real original, man. Did, did, he, did he come out with that? How long did it take him to come up with that fucking cool-ass story? Like, come on, dude. The guy's a joke, man. He, he, he was losing to Shoney Carter on the fucking back in the old days. Dude, the guy, what is he, 50? How old is he, man? Like, he's on, he, he, like, he's up there. I mean, he's definitely not in his prime. But uh, what, what happened? I, he, I feel bad for him. What happened? He, he, what, he, like, did those guys set you up? They had Usman come out or something? Or something crazy happened? I don't even know, man. Like, they, he, you know, he's just been trying. The thing about Sarah is he's just looking to get, you know, some sound bites out of me. He's looking, you know, me for me to reply back to him and so his podcast can take off the ground. His podcast sucks. No one cares about it, man. No one wants to listen to that old fart fucking talk, you know? Like, so he's just looking for, you know, clickbait. He's trying to get me engaged. And, dude, he, honestly, I have not, you hear me how I am. I'm not, I'm not hyped up about it. It is what it is, man. I right. got bigger fish to fry and more money to make, so I'm not worried about little bald-headed uh, twerp fucking Matt Sarah. Uh, I wanted to know how Bisping feels about Jorge Masvidal calling him racist, but being the so-called friend of uh, best friend of Colby Covington, who's playing the quote-unquote meathead pro-Trump bigot type of heel. Um, so yeah, what do you think about that? Uh, Masvidal being yeah. a little bit of a hypocrite. Yeah, well, I'm not going to say that he's a hypocrite, but I'm glad someone asked me about that, actually, because he does, uh, Masvidal is going around trying to tell people that I'm a racist against Latinos, which is just absolutely ridiculous, you know yeah. I mean? For one, Lewis. He's letting me you sleep in your yard. Say again? You're letting me sleep in your backyard. Exactly. Not gonna, no, 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 you're in the garage. You're good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, I've got bloody uh, Puerto Ricans sleeping in my garage. What are you talking about? Um... Yeah, but listen, that's not a nice thing to be going around telling people. And unfortunately, I've had a couple of uh, comments on my Instagram. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're, uh, you're racist against Latinos. I'm like, oh, come on. Could it be further from the truth? And uh, that's just a nasty, nasty, dirty thing to say about somebody. We, yeah. we, it's just despicable. But really. Oh, really, Spick. I'm not you surprised. said Spick. I heard you. Yeah. <laughs> Spick, spickable. <laughs> Lewis is spickable. Um, I'm very spickable. That's a good way to describe it. You me. are spickable. <laughs> you know, you could be a spick. He's spickable. Uh, but, um, oh, <laughs> All we're going to do is cut this clip saying? of you calling me a spick, and now it's confirmed. <laughs> it is despicable. You're not even spickable, Lewis. You're despicable. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you don't even quantify, uh, qualify as a Latino. Uh, no, that's a horrible thing to be saying about somebody. It really is. But I'm not surprised coming from Jorge Masvidal, yeah. you know, because that's the type of person he is. I think he's a low-class individual. Well, why Why I'm, would you do that I'm to your racist. fans? I know I'm not, and I think everybody that knows me knows I'm not. So I'm good with it. Can I tell you the irresponsibility on Jorge Masvidal's side? It's like, dude, you know, that's fine. You, you want to talk shit. It's one thing to talk shit. And we've all, you know, we've watched fighters through the years talk shit. They say very personal shit. They get in people's heads. They fuck with people. But it's actually more fucked up to your fans because you have a lot of young fucking Latin kids or black people or whatever it is that look up to you. 
that are kind of like listening to you as a leader. And whether you want to be a role model or not, you know, Jorge Masvidal, you're a role model of these people, and you're tweeting stuff out, and you're being dishonest because you know that Michael Bisping's not a racist person. You know that he's not a guy that fucking. I mean, dude, you're you're literally. Well, 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 well hold on, hold on. Maybe in his mind, maybe he thinks I am. I don't you know, think so. We don't so. actually have a relationship. We don't have a relationship. I don't know Jorge Masvidal uh, on a personal level whatsoever. I've never had an actual proper conversation with him about anything. So maybe he thinks I am. Maybe he hears me talking shit, whatever, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to give him the benefit well, of the doubt. Well, I think it comes maybe, from maybe you ripping up. That. I'll tell you right now, he's wrong, utterly and, and completely wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Dana White, everybody. How hard is it for you, Dana? Because I know you know you're you're a great promoter, but you're also you're you're a lot more than that. You know, you're kind of in a lot of ways you're kind of a babysitter. And how hard is it for you sometimes to have to take a step back? Like for example, like with the Conor McGregor bus incident, right? You you, you get in the Madison Square Garden, yeah. biggest fight ever, everything's gonna happen, and next thing I know, this amazing superstar athlete goes crazy, starts tossing dollies at buses. I mean, what what goes through your head when that happens? Yeah, that that was a bad day. That was a very bad day. You know, we have a lot of bad days around here where bad shit happens, but that was uh, that was right up there with with the worst. Now, do you do you call Connor and you're like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Or do you have to kind of just let everyone else take it take it? And... Yeah, no. So we uh, yeah, I, I get, you know, I did the, I did the interview with the media. I came back to the arena. I had just left the arena. I was literally half a block down the street when Reed Harris called me freaking out that, that, that Connor was attacking the bus. So, so, um, you know, I didn't understand exactly what was going on or what had happened and I knew it was over. So I went to the hotel and waited for the fighters to come back from the hotel, but they had to stay there because the police were called. Uh. So the police were coming. So I had to, then I left the hotel and drove back to the arena um, and that's when the press was still there and I, I talked to the press and, you know, and Connor and I didn't talk until, uh, I think until Connor had gotten out of jail. I think that's the first time we, we talked. Now, is it like talking, yeah. I mean, is it talking to you like your, like your son, your child, or you saying, Hey, listen, Betty, you got the whole world ahead of you. You know, come on, man. Like, what are you doing? No, I mean, Connor is a guy that, you know, you know, I've obviously been behind since day one. He, he's, a, he's a kid that I have tremendous respect for as, as a fighter and, and as a person. And, uh, you know, we, we've always had this really good working relationship. But for him to come to one of our events at, at the arena and, 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 and do what he did was as bad as it gets. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Well, you, I mean, I was like, I remember texting you, like, "Hey, man, sorry you had a wrong de bad day." You texted back a gun emoji to like your head, <laughs> like fucking. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh man. And then, then I said, like, even John Jones thinks that McGregor needs to put it together. And and like normally I get like an LOL from you, and I got nothing. And I'm like, uh oh, I think yeah. I, I feel like I'm bombing in my own text messages right now. <laughs> uh, th th this is this is not good. Yeah. This comedy is tragedy pl plus time. Let's give this some time. So I, I, yeah, but that's why it's got to be so hard because MMA is such a. You, I mean, you attract such a great athlete, but you also attract some people that are just out there. And for you to have to kind of rein them all in, that's got to be brutal. It's got to be brutal. Yeah. No, it's, it's, we got a lot of people under contract here, over 500 fighters under contract. And that doesn't include all the employees I have here, you know? So things are always happening. Somebody, you know, has personal problems or 
come, you know, every day, every day we deal with this stuff from, you know, on both sides, fighters and employees. Fucking sparring with Luke. 